Hey eBay sellers, it's Suzanne A. Wells. Thanks for coming back for another episode. And today I want to talk to you about how to get your spouse, loved one, significant other, other people in your household on board with your eBay business as far as uh, at least being interested in it or if in some cases even allowing you to do it. I see this a lot with my clients where one person is very excited about the business, they know it can work, they know they want to do it, and they're getting some resistance or even rejection from their loved one, whoever it may be, uh, in their household. And this is really hard if you are trying to build a business um, not to have people on board with it. So first of all, let me say that you know this person, whoever it is, um, you know, giving you some resistance, you know them better than anybody. So, you know, you're going to know how to deal with them um, as far as, you know, talking with them, showing them how it works, that kind of thing. So, th these are just some suggestions. And what I have done is put this together in an outline for you. So, below the video, there is a link to a, uh, a Dropbox file where you can download this uh, like tip sheet to help you work through this process um, because a lot of times people reject this business because they just don't understand it or they don't believe that it can you know be a great thing so it's it's like a sales pitch where you have to be prepared think about what you're gonna say um, think about what this person responds to and you know start working it out because it can be overcome if you look at what they're objecting to, you know, why they're objecting things and, um, you know, figure out a way to help overcome those objections. So um, let's start with, you know, the whole point of this is how to turn no into yes. And it's, it's about persuasion and showing them the facts. So you have to be like a detective and kind of put, together a report to show them how this works because really um, the main problem with people who don't understand or believe this business is really just ignorance. They just don't know. They don't know anybody who does it or they've tried it and they failed or they've known people who have tried it and failed so they assume that's everybody. So it's just a matter of giving them some evidence like you're preparing a court case so that they will you know can at least be informed about how all this works. So again you want to tailor the, the presentation to the person um, that you know you know how they're going to respond to the information. So it's it's not a one size fits all thing. It's it's kind of like working on a relationship. You just have to figure out what that person responds to. So the first thing is to prepare your case. You want to show how other people are being successful. Um, and the the core of your reason for wanting to do this is it's going to make your life better. Whatever that means to you, if it means making extra money, if it means having a home business, if it means having more time with your family, if it means being able to quit a job and stay home and be a stay-at-home mom or dad, um, because that's the reason I see people do this business is somehow it makes their life better. So that's the the angle you've got to come at it from. But you want to prepare your case. You want to give them some real examples of successful people who are already doing this. You can send them to videos on, on my channel or any videos on YouTube that you like. If they if they are a person who likes to get their information from videos um, or you know articles or send them to my Facebook group with the Money Making Mondays where people are posting every week uh, what they're selling, uh, my Money Making Mondays videos. Um, I'll put a link to that playlist at the top um, where they can just watch what people are selling and how much things are selling for and where people are finding these things and actually see the proof of other successful people. Because really in business, if you want to be successful, well, in life, really, if you want to be successful at something, you find somebody who is already doing what you want to do and just follow what they're doing. You model your business after theirs. So that's a great place to start. Okay, the second thing is before you have this conversation with them, 
Try to predict what their objections will be so that you can already handle those. Um, I'm going to go over some common objections at the end, but you know this person. You know what they object to. You know what they like and don't like. And um, so you've got to think about be prepared for their objections and already have a, a good, solid, fact-based answer ready for when that objection pops up. Um, you know, you don't want to say, yeah, this, I know a lot of people are making money on eBay, so we should do it. That's not good enough. You need to show them proof of other people's stores, the Money Making Monday threads, um, videos on YouTube where people have shown what they have sold, those kind of things. That's proof that the business works. Um, now, number three is if you get a no, figure out what what type of no are you getting? There's no there's no for different reasons. And really listen to what they're saying so that you can understand their point of view and try to offer a solution. So there's three types of no. Um, the first one is wrong information. Like you just didn't explain it well enough. So they're saying no because they don't have all the information. They don't have all the facts. So they're just like, no, that won't work. We're not going to do that. Um, the second kind is wrong timing. The person needs time to consider what you've said and process it and digest it. Um, they're saying no because they're trying to stall. It's not like they're saying, well, you know, maybe. Some people just say no because they don't want to say yes right at that moment. So you need to give them time to process the information. And the third type of no is for a wrong circumstance. Um, something out of the person's control is making them say no. Um, so you need to work through what is blocking them. So, for example, if you are a, um, a young woman and you are about to have your first baby or you've you know, got little ones at home and you work and you really want to stay at home, be a stay-at-home mom and um, leave your job, um, your spouse may say, you know, that's not a good idea because, you know, we're not going to have enough money. And that's where you need to have your um, plan figured out of, well, you know, if I quit my job, then I'm not, we're not going to have to pay daycare. Um, I won't need to buy all these, you know, clothes for my job. I won't have transportation expenses. I'll be using a lot less gas uh, to and from work because I'm not going there. Um, you know, all those kind of things and have your plan ready so that when you get the no, you've already thought it out. So that's one thing to think about. Um, now, the next thing is when you get a no, be curious about why they're saying no. Um, because there's usually something deeper behind the answer of no that even maybe the person saying no doesn't realize. So you want to figure out why they're saying no so that you can work to overcome that. Um, you know, maybe this person... Um, maybe their mom had a home business that failed, and so they think no home businesses are ever going to work. Or maybe they have a friend at work who tried eBay and got scammed, and so they, they're like, no way, we're not doing eBay because it's just a bunch of scammers. Or, um, you know, maybe they know somebody who is a eBay seller but borderline hoarder, and their house is just full of stuff, and it's just completely taking over their life, and they don't want to end up like that. So... Figure out why they're saying no so you can find a solution and, you know, find some middle ground there, some common ground where you can come to an agreement. Um, and number five is really important. Don't nag them. When you have this discussion with them in a calm, peaceful environment, you know, if you've got kids, wait till the kids are in bed, you know, wait till it's, um, you know, not a chaotic situation. You know, you want to plan out a good time to have this conversation. Um, say what you're going to say and then let them think about it for a while, days, a week, you know, give them some time to process the information. Don't just keep nagging them all the time about, well, why can't we do eBay? I really want to do eBay. Why aren't you on board with this? Just Make your case and then give them some space to think about it. Um, now, in some situations, if it won't cause a problem in your household with your spouse, uh, your loved one, just do it anyway. 
just start selling your stuff. You know, some relationships are like that where, um, you know, you can just jump in and, and do your own thing and it's, it's not a big deal. Um, other situations, you know, if you're using household money to buy inventory or if you're going to have to store inventory in a place that is going to be, um, um, affect, you know, the rest of the household or, you know, things like that, um, you may not be able to just jump into it on your own. But, you know, it depends on your situation, your person, your relationship and all that. But if the situation warrants it, um, just start doing it. And then that leads into number seven, which is um, show them your successes. If you just started on your own and just start selling your own stuff or um, you have bought some things at a thrift store and you know, show them your successes on paper or, you know, on your eBay account where it's showing your sales, show them your profit. You know, if you're shipping something, say, oh my gosh, I bought this thing for $3 at Goodwill and I just sold it for 60. Sometimes it takes a while for them to believe that this is going to work. And, um, you know, maybe they've never seen this before and they're just not educated about eBay and they just don't really they don't have any experience with it. That's what I run into the most is, is people just don't have experience so they don't know how it works. So continue to show them your successes and they may eventually, you know, come over to the dark side and understand what we do. Um, and so number eight is to work on overcoming their objections. So common objections are, um, I don't want you to quit your job because it's not a stable income. Well, there is some truth to that. Um, and losing benefits if you're quitting a full-time job. So um, watch my video on that, you know, before you leave a full-time job, the things you need to think through before you transition to eBay. So there's a lot of good information in that video. Um, but really, you know, nothing is stable. Um, people are laid off every day. Companies downsize all the time. And a lot of people coming to eBay have been in those situations and they just don't want to be in that situation again. They don't want to um, work for a company that's going to let them go or downsize them out or lay them off or whatever. So really nothing is stable. Um, Actually, eBay is more stable because you have more control. The more you work, the more you're going to make. And that is not true at an hourly job or a salary job. You may be putting in 10 hours a day, but you're not going to make any more money. Um, that's not true with eBay. You can build it based on how much time you put in. There is a lot of unpaid time at the beginning because you're building a business, but eventually you're going to get to the point where... Um, the more you work, the more you make. So there's that. Another objection is, I don't want all that junk in my house. Well, that's that's a very valid objection. Um, this is where you have to come back with uh, how you've researched storage solutions, how you're going to store the items, what you're going to sell. Um, I had a client one time whose um, husband was very opposed to this because he had a fear of um, bed bugs and he did not want any of this stuff from a thrift store coming into his house or even in his washing machine. So we had to figure out ways that this girl could um, do eBay and work around that. Um, you know, it was like, okay, well then just don't sell clothing. You know, that's, that's one way to solve it. Or, um, you know, use somebody else's washing machine, take your stuff to the laundromat, use a neighbor's washing machine. Um, you know, we had to figure out different ways for her to approach that, but that was a pretty big roadblock where um, the spouse did not want any of this stuff coming in the house, and that's just something you have to figure out and, and work with. Um, another objection is it just won't work, and that's pretty, pretty easily overcome when you start showing them stuff online that real sellers have done. Again, my Money Making Mondays videos, um, it's yes it does work and they just they don't understand it they've not been exposed to it so they just don't know um, another one is it takes too long to make any money well that depends on what you're selling it depends on a lot of things um, some people sell put things up for sale and they sell in an hour some things take a year so it just depends on what it is and the situation uh, yeah, it's no guaranteed income and there's no plan to how long it takes something to sell. You have to have a lot of patience in this business. 
But when you work on it over time and build up your store, um, you'll see that it does work. Um, another one is it takes you away from the family. And I hear that one a lot. Um, you know, people don't want their the spouse shut up in an office or in the basement all day working. Well, actually, it it brings you together with the family and you can get the family involved, especially if you have kids who are old enough to do some of the tasks that um, you can give them, whether it's uh, steaming clothing, cleaning items, uh, packaging things. Um, there's a lot of things kids can do, and you know, as they get older, they're going to uh, see this business like like my kids did. Uh, my daughter does this business also, um, and my son he got really creative. He doesn't he doesn't do eBay. Um, you know, he'll come to me with stuff every now and then that he wants me to sell. But um, what he figured out to do when he was about 12 is he was very into um, these. Uh, online video games where you play with people in other countries and it was something medieval I can't think of the name of it but it was one of these medieval things um, but you know he learned to play that game and then he he would build up accounts and then sell the account to someone else so they didn't have to start from scratch because he was he was making all this money and you would have money and I was like what are you doing and he explained it that you know he was smart enough to <laughs> create this virtual thing that he could sell to somebody and um, he still does that now. The other day he did something on one of these virtual games and got some kind of treasure out of a chest or something and the thing's worth $200 and he's going to sell it in about a week uh, for probably more than that but he won it in a game as part of a a reward for doing something and you know he's 21 now so uh, $200 is a lot there but um, my point is that it's great for your kids to see you having a home business. They can participate. They can understand how it works. Um, you're in the home, so you're going to be there. Uh, so you can multitask, go back and forth doing laundry, you know, cooking dinner. You can work with it uh, back and forth all day. So it's not really going to take you away from the family. It's going to enhance your family time. You're going to be there more often. Um, so I, you know, I hear that objection a lot too. Um, and then the last one is, what if it fails? Okay, what if it does? But what if it doesn't? What if it is successful? Um, I think a lot of people who are reluctant to start new things, home businesses, things where they, they're taking things on personally, have this fear of failure. And um, as an entrepreneur, we just learn to fail fail well. <laughs> you know, I, I fail pretty well. There's a lot of things I've tried that didn't work. And so I say, okay, that didn't work. Let's go on to the next thing. So failure is not um, a negative thing. It's just part of the learning process and part of how you grow. So, um, you know, if, if this is a person you're dealing with that has that, what if I fail mentality, um, that's kind of hard to get over. But, um, you know, the people I see who fail at eBay are the ones who just don't put in the time. They don't have the patience. They um, they think things are going to sell immediately. Um, they don't realize it is a marathon. It is not a sprint. It takes time. But, um, you know, there's people using it now to save for retirement. Um, they, you know, they're in it for the long haul. So if, if you're a younger person and you're trying to convince your spouse or significant other that this is what you want to do, you need to look at it that way as it's something for the long term that um, will be in place. And, you know, I honestly don't think eBay's going anywhere. I think it's, um, it's now such a part of our culture where people, you know, are buying used instead of new. Uh, they're buying vintage. They're buying collectibles. Um, they're selling stuff they don't want, need, or use. Um, some of us are going to minimalism where we, we're getting rid of our stuff and other people, um, you know, like to collect things. So it's, it's kind of everybody passing their stuff around, but um, I don't see it going anywhere. So check below the video for your tip sheet on how to help a spouse or loved one 
understand eBay, how to get them on board with your business. And if you have any objections that you've heard or you're dealing with, please put them in the comments below and I'll try to help you with an answer because um, there's always a solution to every problem. It's just a matter of figuring out what it is. And I've helped you know people turn their spouse around when they really wanted to do this and their spouse was just creating a roadblock and we finally figured out you know what was the issue why didn't they want this business going on in their house and you know found a good compromise for a lot of these people so i hope this helped you out um if you have any questions or comments please put them below and i will do my best to help you thanks for watching have a great day on ebay bye